So we have learned about local anesthesia, which is where just pain is blocked in, for example, in your gums or your mouth. So when you're getting a filling, when you are very sensitive with scaling or debridement, a dentist may come and freeze an area in your mouth. That's local anesthesia. What we're going to talk about right now is general anesthesia. And what you may remember from general anesthesia is um, when someone is put under. So when someone is put under, like this person here, that is considered general anesthesia. Sometimes when we get our wisdom teeth removed, we may choose to go through an oral surgeon. And what the oral surgeon does is um, the oral surgeon may put you under so that he or she can remove your wisdom teeth. So general anesthesia is typically used with oral surgeons, especially if they want to put you under. The way general anesthesia works is basically a drug that's given to you. And what it does is it basically slows down your brain. It depresses or slows down your brain. And one of the most common um, or one of the common general anesthesia that we do see in dentistry is nitrous oxide. And now nitrous oxide is not really um, general anesthesia in that it's not a typical general anesthesia when you're put under. Rather, what nitrous oxide does is it calms you down. Another um, word for nitrous oxide may be laughing gas, where you just breathe something and it calms you down. And we're going to look more into it further down. So way back before, when someone needed some work done in their teeth or when someone needed a surgery, what they might do, what they would actually do was strangulate them. So they would actually strangulate their neck until they lose consciousness and then uh, do whatever they have to do, do the work that needs to be done in their body. After the strangulation period, we or they realized that there was other drugs like opium, um, alcohol, and those were used to render patients unconscious or to keep patients unconscious. Nitrous oxide was finally discovered in 1776. And then 20 years later, this guy over here decided that, you know what, we can use it for surgery. And that's when it was used for surgery. It wasn't until the mid 1800s where we actually found true general anesthesia, where people were literally put to sleep when they were getting work done on their body. So there are four stages, some say planes. So stages are planes of general anesthesia, stage one, two, three, four. We're going to look at all of them. Just to briefly um, summarize this picture, stage one is when you just lose um, pain. So when there's sorry, loss of pain, so you don't feel pain. You are still conscious. So stage one, you're still conscious. Stage two, this is where this is where you give a drug and they all of a sudden become combative. They, it's a dangerous situation where they could come and fight you. So we avoid stage two general anesthesia, but this is a stage that can happen. Stage three is the one that you're familiar with. This is where you're put under. So you're put to sleep. And then we have stage four where you um have no heart rate. It's like you're you're dead. You're paralyzed. So we'll look at all those stages. Stage one, this is nitrous oxide. So this is the one that's used in dentistry. And what so happens with stage one is that you have reduced pain. So typically we give them to kids and um, kids can tolerate the dental procedure better because they are a lot more calmer. They're still conscious. They can still respond. So you ask them questions, they can still respond. What's interesting is that after when they are done with the dental procedure, some of, sometimes the kids comment and say that, oh, that went by so fast. So an hour appointment, for example, may feel like 10 minutes to them. And that's because amnesia may be evident. They kind of forget about how long the appointment is, and they kind of forget some things that happened in the appointment. So stage one, nitrous oxide is a very good example. They're still conscious. So you can see his eyes are still awake. Is still open so he's still awake stage two this is where they can be combative right so this is where they could become delirious or even too excited it, they're just not themselves we usually don't pe keep people in the stage two stage 
because um, they're prone to involuntary movement. So they're prone to, um, they could pass number, or they could, you know, do number one or number two without knowing, or they could be uh, vomiting too, right? Which is in a good uh, stage for us to be in. Stage three, this is where someone is put under. So let me just move this picture so we can see better. So this is the one that you are familiar with. So when you're put under, that is known as surgical anesthesia. So an oral surgeon, when they put you under so that you uh, so that they can remove their wisdom teeth, they are in stage three of general anesthesia. And then stage four is when there is no heart rate, when you're not breathing at all, so death. Um, if, you, if they check your pupils, it's widely dilated. So you, we know that um, you're you're not breathing. Your blood pressure is uh, decreasing rapidly. So there's, there's no respiration. There's no heart rate. There's no, um, you're not breathing. Your pupils are really big, really dilated. There are levels of anesthesia. Induction, maintenance, and recovery. So when the doctor is just um, preparing all the medication and just starting to inject you with those medications, that is the induction. It's like a plane just starting to take off. Then there's the maintenance, which is where you are completely under now, right? So where this is where the surgery will happen, where they will remove your wisdom teeth, for example. And this is likened to a plane flying in the air. It's maintained in the air. And then we have recovery. This is where the surgery is done. And now we're bringing you back to consciousness. And so that's kind of likened to a um, plane that is landing. So when we get anesthesia, um, anesthetic agents or when we go through general anesthesia, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that could happen. Your heart could go into failure. Your blood pressure could either get too high or too low. It can affect your heart rate. This is actually very interesting. Um, what this means, teratogenicity, is that it can affect pregnant uh, women. So the reason why I say is male or female exposure is if you're a female, so if you're a client, that, if you're a patient that's getting general anesthesia, it can affect you, and if you're pregnant, it can affect you because it can cause miscarriages. What's also interesting is that if you are a female and you're working in a dental office where there is nitrous oxide, if you have too much, if you're around too much nitrous oxide, you could also, and if you're pregnant, you could also miscarry. Studies also show that if you're around nitrous oxide or high levels of nitrous oxide, you could have difficulty conceiving, so it can cause infertility. The reason why the male is rich in there is because if you're male, your wife could have difficulty conceiving because um, you are around nitrous oxide. So the wives of the male operator could be affected as well. So I know this is a big concern, and many people rightfully so, are concerned because of this um, effect of miscarriages. And so for those that do work in offices with nitrous oxide, there are monitors that you can purchase to monitor how much nitrous oxide you're exposed to. And if you're exposed to too much, then that's a sign that, you know, you want to be away from nitrous oxide. Another side effect for general anesthesia is that people can get headache, people can be tired, people, you know, um, are not happy and sometimes addiction and we're going to look at that in the next video.